There's the age old saying of what do you want to do in five years? What do you want to do in 10 years or 15 years? What do you want to do when you get older? And recently I challenged myself to reflect and answer these questions. And like many of you, I really struggled. So in today's video, we're going to dive deeper than ever before. And we're going to die together. It is a little bit of a clickbait. We're not actually going to die, obviously, but we're going to talk about writing your obituary. And I know that sounds super crazy, super absurd, but we're going to talk about three major factors why you should do it, how you should do it. And if you stick around all the way to the end, I'm going to show you now that you've done it, what the hell you do from there. All right, so let's get to it. Why the hell should you write your own obituary? And this isn't to give you the heebie jeebies or to get all stoic, but it's surprisingly a super powerful tool for both self reflection and more importantly, goal setting. You see in today's world, it's so easy to get caught up in emails and errands and doom scrolling on your phone. Our world is designed so that you often lose sight of the bigger picture. But when you focus on writing your obituary, you are pretty much forced to zoom all the way out and focus on not what you only want to do in the next five years, but what do you want to do for the rest of your life? What do you want to be remembered as? I think here's the secret. When you die, nobody talks about your resume or what you did for your company. Instead, they talk about your relationships, what you did for others, and the laughs and the memories that you made with other people. So think about it. Obituaries really aren't about death. They're about life. And by writing your own obituary, you get to define exactly what your story is. And let's not beat around the bush. Unless you are some closet vampire. Paper cut. Life isn't forever. It might feel super uncomfortable at first and you don't necessarily know where or how to start. But if you stick through it and you really embrace it, the ideas that you're about to unleash can be your biggest wake up call. It's going to push you to prioritize and focus on what really matters so that you can live the rest of your life more intentionally. As I worked my way through this process, I kept coming back to two questions. Am I doing what I want to be doing? And am I making the most of my time? So now let's talk about your goals. Until now, I've constantly set goals of things that I think I should be doing. And I'm not necessarily saying that that's a bad approach, but we're engineers. We're so used to taking the end goal and reverse engineering the steps to get there. Having the destination of your obituary ensures that the priorities of your life are crystal clear. I think we can use those big stones and start planning all of our milestones so that we can actually hit them. So at the end of our life, we're completely satisfied and full of joy. So now that I've pretty much, you know, gave you the secret that I think this process is another life hack on how to set appropriate goals that you are going to find fulfilling and enjoying and all that stuff, you're probably saying something like, cool story, bro. Now I understand why, but how the hell can I write an obituary for a life that I'm still living? So let's dive into that right now. Before I started this journey, I was super intimidated. I had no clue on what to say or where to start or how the hell to say it. I had no clue what kind of questions I should be asking myself. But honestly, I think that's because I was just trying to over-engineer it. Before you dive in deep, just realize that this isn't your next masterpiece or a novel that you're trying to release. It's about honesty and reflection and the vision so that you can actually carry on and hit your big stones that you're trying to achieve in life. So don't worry if you're feeling overwhelmed or confused or you're still not bought into this process yet, we're gonna go over it step by step. First and foremost, you're gonna need to find a place in your house, in public, at a park, wherever, that you can post up for a couple hours and that you would be freely able to express any emotions that you might come across. I'm not saying that this is gonna make you cry hysterically while you're working it, but I would be lying if I didn't say while I was working on mine that I got a little emotional. It's a super weird thing. Now open a notion, grab a piece of paper, and let's set up our framework so that we can just fill in the blanks. If you wanna skip this step, check the link down below. I dropped you a free notion template with the prompts for these questions. And I've actually given you a couple more to make your life a little bit easier. So to start this framework, just start simple. Put down your name and your age of death. And obviously we won't know for sure, but it was kind of fun to put down that I'm gonna live to the ripe old age of 102. Where's old man Jenkins? Now let's set up the core framework. We're gonna focus on three main sections, your achievements, your relationships, and your values. I don't think there's any particular order you need to work these in, and I don't even think that there's any kind of standard or bar that you're trying to hit. For example, your achievements don't need to be some monumental change. They could totally be personal little tiny victories that have a lot of meaning and impact to you. That being said, I think one thing that you should strive to do is write down in your achievement section, write down one thing that you have given back to the world. Doesn't need to be now, doesn't need to be in 10 years, 
but just something before your time has come. What did you give back to the world? Now for your relationships, I want you to write down in detail the people that mattered the most to you and how they've either impacted your life or you've impacted their life, probably both. And take your time here, be as detailed as possible. Because remember, your relationships is one of the core pieces, the memories, the laughs, the core pieces that people will talk about when your time does come. And finally, you need to talk about your values. What do you stand for? What principles guide your actions? Truthfully, this might be the hardest section to write about because you need to be super introspective, but I promise you, put in the work, this is one of the most meaningful parts of the whole process. All in all, remember, this is totally a draft, but now that you've written this, it quite honestly, a pretty badass document all about you. So don't stress on perfection. This is a living document that's just going to provoke you to ask important questions to yourself and the direction and guidance it can provide you while you're still here, which is a great segue into the next section. Now that you have written this document about your own life, what do you do with all of this information? Having done this myself, when I finished it, I realized, holy shit, what I just produced is super powerful for the guidance and direction that I'm trying to take my life. I have newfound clarity on dreams and achievements and aspirations that I never really acknowledged them for what they were. And more importantly, now that I have these big milestones, I knew that I could take them and reverse engineer them into bite-sized chunks. One of the most amazing realizations I had of this whole process is that this has given me the roadmap for my life, not of my life. Truthfully, I think that is like the powerful part of writing your own story. So take a look across yours. What patterns did you find throughout them? What big stones did you put down naturally? Maybe some of your big ones are career goals. Maybe it's that you wanna run your own business. Maybe it's that you wanna encourage and embrace better relationships. In my experience, the best way to start any of this process is to write them down on something that is physically tangible. I love Notion. This is the time to ditch Notion, get a pen, get some paper and write these things down, handwritten on something that is physical. So write them down, create a plan, and set a deadline. These aren't goals of the distant future, they're here and now. These goals were on your final message because you want to complete them at some point of your life. It's like the old saying, the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago, and the second best time is now. So this is your call to action, this is your now. I hope this video was helpful. I think it's a really exciting, interesting way to start finding some of these goals. I had never done anything like this before. It was challenging. It forced me to look really deep inside of myself. It was emotional. It's a hard process, but I am so, so glad that I actually went through it, did all of the work, got everything out of my head and onto paper, and now I feel super refreshed. I feel recharged, and I feel like I have legitimate direction to help guide at least where I want to go in the next 10 years. I might come back to this. I might do it again. I'm sure I will do it again, actually. But now I have the opportunity to go on and start checking off some of these boxes so that at the end of my time, I have all of the achievements and relationships and success that I deem valuable. So if you like this video or you found it helpful, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. Your love and support is more appreciated than I can put in words. And stay tuned. I have some super cool, super exciting announcements coming soon. I just need a little bit more time to finish setting up the frameworks and structure. So it should be pretty sweet. And I'm looking forward to letting you all know what my top secret project is. If you have any tips or experiences that you'd like to share, drop us a comment down below. But otherwise, I'll see you next week. Peace.